everyone, welcome back to the channel. We have another interview for you today. And today we have an up and coming band called Morning Fall. So go ahead and introduce yourselves. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Trenton Hill. I'm the bassist for the band and also one half of the vocals. Hello, my name is Ashton Doms and I play guitar and drums and I also do vocals for the band. Alrighty. Thanks for coming on, guys. Of course. Uh, no, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad me and Ashton love feeding into our ego. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it was really funny because I saw like Trenton was showing his music to our boss at work. And I was just kind of, you know, me being nosy. Hey, what's that? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you know, we're in a band. And I was like, oh, we got to bring you on. I felt so bad because it was like two weeks of me kind of leaving a little bit early from work and missing you. <laughs> Like I felt so bad, but I'm glad I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, I randomly came in a little bit earlier, and I was like, "Finally, I caught you! I, I have a question." Yeah. <laughs> you got lucky too, because I'm trying to quit my job soon. So yeah. I mean, any any day now, you would have it would have been the last time. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's yeah. get into some of these questions. You want to start us off, T? Sure. Uh, tell us about your choice for how you brand yourself and brand your music. As far as like a brand goes for me i try to stick to this pretty unique niche i guess because of the nature of the band and certain subject matters that we touch on most of it is largely apolitical and we aren't talking a lot about any specific projects a lot of it for me i'm trying to channel this specific vibe and atmosphere which is usually mostly emotional yeah, and I think a big thing too is just that like as pompous as it may sound, it is far more about trying to make it artistic. Obviously by extension of playing live shows and getting to, you know, post stuff, we're having fun. But it's way more about just the art of it. Yeah, that's definitely respectable. So stemming from that, how did you end up like forming the band and where did the name Morning Fall come from? It's a long and storied history. <laughs> um but in middle school uh, it's where me and Ashton met. Uh, we basically underwent like four or five different bands, and it really only started like actually be like making music uh, like two years ago it, it is when it got legit. Like the first like two years, we did like a school talent show, and we played Three Days Grace, and that was the hardest thing I'd ever played in my life. So. I don't know if everyone else was on the same page, but I don't think any of us were taking it seriously. It was really just us being friends, and it was like, that, wouldn't that be funny? And then I guess subconsciously, we just sort of switched, and we're like, all right, this is just what we want to do for the rest of our lives now. As far as the band name, one of the most typical things is starting a band name, and we had a couple of um, beginning options. I guess the most prominent of which being No Longer Human, which we didn't end up going with. Other bands had it, which is usually the case, which that was because of a book that I like. Morning Fall, not a lot of significance. I just thought it sounded kind of pretty, and I fucking love fall, so we went with that one. Oh, you know, that's an important question. Real quick, pause. I, I, can we curse? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Morning Fall was so impromptu as a name. We were sitting there trying to release our first single, uh, Broken by the Sky, on all uh, streaming platforms. But anyway, we were trying to come up with a name and then suddenly I was like hold up let me check one more time and make sure our band name isn't taken and it was taken we both were like devastated so we kind of just grinded out a name as soon as we could it worked out because I really do like that name a lot how do you guys like being in the band since it's only Trenton and every time we get together it's just sort of us hanging out and doing music so it's really quite pleasant there isn't a lot of band politics to worry about i really got lucky with this guy in particular because nothing nothing happens we we just play music when we get bored we watch a movie a horror movie or we talk about whatever is going on in terms of the music aspect it's just kind of like it's it's really easy ashton makes it easy because if i have an idea if it's good we run with it he does a lot of heavy lifting in terms of recording and you know having ideas and stuff so in terms of the actual like writing process and just everything, everything's been really easy. And yeah. if I ever get tired, we can just go eat somewhere. How did you choose the style for your music? Just over time, the amount of music that him and I both listen to, that's what inspired us. Him and I both write a lot of other music that isn't this. 
But for me, it was just the easiest thing to write. And it's the stuff that I enjoyed hearing the most. And I wanted to sort of channel all of the favorite bands or artists that I really enjoyed. And I think that's a important thing where, with a lot of, I'd say, young artists. Not that we are like senior veterans or anything. I think a good thing to do with a band is not necessarily before you guys meet up, say, hey, can we sound like X band or can we do X genre? The best thing you could do is just play until you find the sound that you guys just create, you know, jam and you'll find it. Uh, that's kind of what happened with me and Ashton. Obviously, we knew each other's tastes, so that probably fed into it. But to a certain extent, the songs just kind of came naturally. What are you guys' backgrounds in music? I grew up around a lot of music and then I can cite one specific source which really got me wanting to play music, specifically drums, and that would be Jack Jacksepticeye. But he had like two YouTube videos where he was drumming and I was like, that looks really satisfying. I need to get into that. So after a couple of years of begging, I finally started playing drums and then guitar I started playing largely out of just, I wanted to be able to write a whole song by myself. A lot of it actually came out of necessity. I learned how to do vocals simply just because we couldn't lock in a vocalist starting out. So I was like, I'll do it myself, fine. This is like every person's answer. It was like, I started playing Guitar Hero just randomly one day, and I felt like the coolest guy in the world. You know, I thought that was cool. So I wanted to play guitar for a little bit. I feel like this is inherent to musicians to a certain degree, but we're attention fiends, and me most definitely, I'm an attention fiend. The more I thought about it, I was like, there are so many guitarists everywhere. I know like three of them. Let me just learn to play bass, because I don't know a single bassist. And ever since then, I've met, uh, like, other than shows, because obviously you're going to meet bassists at a show. Other than shows, I've met, like, three bassists. So I think I made the right decision. Like, I played in the marching band a year, and I played Rocksmith to learn bass. That's the extent of my background. I'm pretty bare bones, but particularly Guitar Hero. That's the, that's the answer. <laughs> Guitar Hero is a fantastic game. Very valid. It really is. It really is. I want I want it to make a comeback in some way because Guitar Hero Live was a fantastic game, but it got like got shelved. I don't know. Yeah, because I remember like I have Guitar Hero Live, and I remember at first I wasn't a huge fan of how they changed it to like three black and three white, and like you could like bar across them. Like it felt so weird. But then I was like, wait, this is more realistic. So I like this change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like. I think guitarists liked it more than actual, like, <laughs> our hero fans. Um, but if anything, like, guitar hero, like, the TV mode, like, that was awesome. Um, just stuff like that. But, you know, sadly now, I, if I'm correct, like, all the companies that owned, like, Guitar Hero and, like, Rock Band have gone under. So, as of right now, those kind of games are pretty done, if I'm correct. Don't mm. quote me on that. Describe your experience with working in music. If you have a lot of passion for it, and if you have a lot of passion for your instrument, you can make it work. It can be very, very troublesome. Mainly just because if you really want to make money off of it, and if you really want to succeed, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of your own personal beliefs and morals. For me, as a drummer trying to find a band to work with to pay me, there are options, sure but 90% of them, I'm just not gonna like those people necessarily. Of course, there are exceptions, and I have found bands where I really do enjoy being around them. It's like having a normal job where you have coworkers you don't really like, but you're getting paid and you gotta do it. And for me, I have such insane desire to succeed in this that I will ultimately just stuff it down. I don't like these people, sure, but I'm getting to play drums and I'm gonna get paid for it, so I'm gonna do it. It's pretty well known that it's not easy to get a band to be profitable and successful which can be worrisome but i don't have anything else to do i think that's an important thing new artists or people who want to do this it's like you have to have kind of a burning passion for it or else you're going to burn out the only thing that's been keeping me going like we without going into any details like me and ashen were in another band before this and we lost uh, like all the song we had an album worth of songs and a few shows under our belt and uh, we lost all of it. The band had to end. If this was a hobby, like for some people, that would have been it, right? You put all that time and effort into something and now it's gone. But because this is like my one thing and this is the thing that I love the most, you know, 
that you got to keep going. You can't say no after that. For me, like it takes a really specific kind of person in a very specific set of circumstances in order for someone to want to pursue this full time. It's not easy. It's not fun most of the time. And for me, I just simply don't have anything else. If I didn't have music, I wouldn't have anything else necessarily to give my life to, to really pursue on any level that is substantial to me. This is specific and unique to me, but even if you do have all of that desire and all that passion, for most people, it's just not financially in the cards. So even if you have all of it, it's really, really rare to get someone who has all of that desire and all that passion and then also enough luck to be able to financially pursue it. And even above that, all the luck that they would actually succeed and find an audience. Uh, another experience of being in specifically metal music, obviously I haven't really explored out of metal music yet. I hope to. But in terms of what we've experienced as of playing live, the one big thing is all the bands and the people who are you know watching you play live, they are the sweetest people and they will 100% get you through the tough times of being in a band and making music. I remember my first show, this guy who, who was in like every band under the sun in like Georgia, you know, he was a drummer, uh, Scott Belcher from God Tongue. He might not be in God Tongue anymore. Either way, Scott Belcher, I love him. He came up to me and he noticed that I was kind of like really nervous. Like I was just sitting in the green room couch, just like looking down. And he, and he like gave me this big pep talk and like, you know, how much we were gonna kill it and we killed it i owe a lot to him for that pep talk and you know more than just that one thing like everyone is so supportive in the scene for the most part from what i can see you know some people maybe don't want to talk but that's okay but for the most part the people who are loud are loud in support of you i i appreciate that a lot like a yeah. lot a lot do you have any songs coming out or plans for future songs Yes, we have we have a song out now called Broken by the Sky, which we released maybe a few months ago. And we for sure are going to try to get this album released in sometime early half of next year. 2024 it'll be because we're recording that this December. We might try to release some stuff in between then and now, but that's a maybe. But for sure an album coming out next year. What's your favorite part of the music process? I think ultimately it's either playing the song live, which is like the final culmination of the songwriting process, is showing it to other people or hearing the song as it is after you've added all the elements that you want to when it's still in production, having it like done as a song or lyric writing for me because I'm a big fan of literature. I'm a big poetry guy and I love writing and lyrics are often the only outlet I have for that specific art passion of mine. I think definitely for sure playing it live, but I think there's another big one for me is like writing the part and you know it's the part. Like maybe maybe it doesn't end up being everyone's favorite thing, but to you, you just wrote something that you're like gonna play on your own and you're gonna practice. I always try to have a part in a song wherever I can. You know, without being intrusive, there's always a part of the song that I look forward to playing. And whenever I get something that I'm like really happy about, I'll play that part nonstop. And it encourages me a lot to keep writing. Yeah, I think my favorite part is definitely writing that really good part, you know? So then we, we have my stupid little question down here. What brand instruments do you guys have? Because I'm a nerd for that stuff. I would say, at least for me, as far as guitar goes, I've been as a solid. I thought about getting into Schecter, but the first electric guitar that I ever got was an Ibanez and it worked and it was not expensive. It was 350 and I got it like two, maybe three years ago and it's fine and it wasn't that expensive. And that for me, I'm sold. If it's not, if you're not going to gouge me with money and it's going to be solid forever, then for sure that for me. And as far as drums, I'm not buying drum kits very often and so far all I've gotten was just what was cheapest. So that's a bit more of a complicated, nuanced question, but maybe Tama. I hear a lot of good things about that brand. Yeah, no, I'm so glad he brought up Ibanez. Legitimately, uh, not enough people bring it up. I appreciate Ibanez so much. You know, at the end of the day, are their basses going to sound as good as a Dingwall? 
or a Warwick or anything like that, no. But they're giving metal bases for $300 that sound good enough to be played live and feel good enough. Like, that's... I, I, I really do appreciate that. Because you don't see that enough. A simple Fender, like, precision base or anything is, like, 500 600 And it's like, that's nothing. I'm not paying that Fender, no. <laughs> um... Ibanez, on the other hand, I really it, it feels like charity uh, uh, to a certain extent. I know three hundred dollars is still tough. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, they're giving you a lot for very little. Um, but yeah, for any like if you're looking to get into metal and you know you you don't want to break the bank, as they say, get an Ibanez. That's the best way to do it. There, it, it'll it's reliable, and then. Once once everything's going great, then you could break into the better stuff. But yeah, Ibanez. I'm an Ibanez fanboy all the way. <laughs> I guess you look. I went. I went to Guitar Center to kind of look around because I need an amp. Because like, I got two electric guitars. I don't know what brand they are. There's like one that looks really nice. It's like um, it just looks. I don't know how to explain it. It looks like an electric guitar. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, just in your bad lighting with your fucking goofy ass. <laughs> Stop bullying. Oh, no, we Look do that. We do that all the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck you, Vincent. You're not allowed to do that. What are you talking about? I'm inspecting the base. I've never seen that logo before. Okay, this is an older one that my uncle gave me. That's a G at the top in the red. Then it could be a Gibson, but then again, I have no idea what Gibson's old logo might have looked like. I you myself. Idiot. That's not a G, that's an E. Then maybe it's an Epiphone, Trenton. Oh, hold up. No, it's definitely an Epiphone. I googled oh, yeah. it. You're you're the one who couldn't tell a G from an E. <laughs> it's fucking blurry, Trenton. You can't lie. Right. That. I remember, like, I picked up just like a bunch of random small instruments lately, and one of them was an ocarina, if you if you know what that is. <laughs> and, uh, and it's so funny because um, I was watching some videos, and luckily, like, I got a good one. But in some of the videos, they were like, yeah, look, this this Legends of Zelda one that looks pretty, don't get it, it's horrible, it's not gonna be in tune, don't do it. <laughs> yes, no, I had the same thing. I have an ocarina, too. Um, Og, but yeah, no, I have an ocarina, too. And I was looking online, and I wanted a Zelda one so bad, <laughs> but they all, everyone was like, I, I swear to God, if you get that, you will die. <laughs> you get, an, get a Zelda ocarina. It looks like the um, one I have. Is that like the ocean ocean ocarina thingy? It just says AC on it. Uh, yeah, that that's the brand it. I got. Oh it's yeah, it's the exact same go. brand. So Ocean's brand something. What what is this? Yeah, ocean notes. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. No, I'm happy to see that. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> the ocarinas, they're fun. I, I I'm telling. Here's a teaser. I don't know if it's happening in this album, but mark my words, I'm going to put an ocarina in one of our songs. It's going to happen whether or not Ashton knows or agrees with it. Trenton, you got to tell me when you do so I can learn how to play it. And then the moment your song drops, I release, hey, uh, we did a cover of this song on ocarina. It's going to be like three notes. I suck at this thing, but I will absolutely <laughs> tell you. I will make a cover of those three notes and it's going to do great. <laughs> All right. Do you guys I, have I, any questions for us? I was gonna say it's it's interview time for you guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which one of you guys edits the videos, or is it a combined effort? Um, I mainly do editing. She does the editing, well, and then I will um, when we like on a piano tutorials, I'll do like the the two the thingy when the notes go down. <laughs> I don't remember. What okay. It's called. So so basically, <laughs> our process we have like a bunch of different types of videos that we do. Um, the two main ones are quizzes and piano, like, covers and stuff. So what we'll usually do is, like, either I'll do the cover or he'll do the cover. Like, we'll arrange it in our music notation software. And then we'll export that as a MIDI file. Then T will take that MIDI file and put it in our software called Embers that we pay for every month. And then it, he makes it look all nice and pretty. And then he sends that to me if we're doing more with it. If it's not, then we'll just upload it that way. But then I'll do like thumbnails, and if we do our quizzes, which is a lot more editing because we put the timer, the reveal, all this other fancy stuff in there, then uh, he'll send it my way and I'll edit all that. 
but usually for like the quizzes we'll tag team because we put like 14 songs in those things it takes a while yeah <laughs> but like we'll tag team he does seven i do seven we mash it together make it look all nice and then we upload it i just hate it thing i wanted to rant about it <laughs> i mean i heard of people that do enjoy it and i can get that but every time i have to edit a video or edit a song together it is like torturous it is legit <laughs> agony Another question I had, have you guys been struck by the YouTube, like, copyright overlords yet? Has that happened? Ooh. Can I answer this one? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is actually really funny. Um, we we've never gotten striked, but we have gotten copyright claims, and it's usually just we either can't monetize or it's shared monetization, which is not so bad. Because in the beginning, like, we, do, we only did piano covers to start out. And it was so funny, we would get a copyright like claim, and we would be like, like flattered, like, oh my god, our cover is so good that they think it's the original, like, that's amazing. <laughs> but, <Wow. laughs> like, it's really not that bad, and especially with um, YouTube's new, what's it called, new policy with YouTube Shorts, we can put copyrighted music all we want, and we don't have to worry about it anymore for Shorts, so that's nice. Yeah. But we usually try to um, avoid the claims. As long as it doesn't take away our monetization, we don't mind about the claim being there. Like, I think he got a claim on, like, a Sabaton piano cover that he did. But, oh, like, yeah. it did. we have full monetization, so we don't care. <laughs> Every time I do a Gojira cover, if it gets posted to Instagram, it's not, they can't see it in France for some reason. Which <laughs> really... Why the are they doing that cheap. to the French? <laughs> no wonder the French are so unhappy all the time. They don't get to... S <laughs> That's sad. If you can't get into metal, or if you're struggling with it, to like conceptualize, like, oh, why Why would you listen to people screaming at me? Rah. You know, you think <laughs> about it like it's just pure unbridled emotion. And that'll, that'll send you on your way to understanding why we do what you, we do. I will say, I used to be one of the people that didn't like metal. I used to be like, oh, uh, that, this is just noise, I don't like it. But then I started listening to stuff like, I, I got into like the light metal, and not death metal, but like, you know, stuff like uh, Skrillex, Three Days Grace, like just kind of like the simple stuff. And then that was like my segue into the intense stuff. And then all of a sudden I started liking it. <laughs> like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of baby metal. They're like a Japanese group that combines like intense death metal with like the poppy Japanese music and it's really weird but I like it. And there's this one song where, uh, uh, do you know Megitsune? The song? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I don't think I know that one. Okay, that's like my favorite song by them. And there's a like a bridge where they just go into like this intense rhythmic guitar with the drums and they put like the pig squealing in the background. I used to hate that. But now every time that part comes on, I'm like, yeah! Cut this out if you answer incorrectly. Did you guys <laughs> listen to our song yet, huh? What you think? I did. T? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I definitely did listen to it. I, I will say I've only listened to it twice, so I, I don't I don't know it know it, but I ha I can say I've listened to it. <laughs> no, I have an excuse. Here. No. I haven't been I don't know where to go. YouTube! All streaming platforms! <laughs> all streaming it's platforms. All streaming morning. Platform. Okay, now I know. I'm gonna check it out right now. <laughs> just like all of you who are watching this video should too. Links in the description. Boom. Yeah, just thank you guys so much. I'm really happy that we got to do this. I just, that one bass solo part, I, uh, or, oh, oh, Savage Wood, where I'm going like. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, yeah, tell tell me about yourself, Ashen. Babinga. 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 